conflict of names, I would assume we would leave that in some kind of a residential development along there. Um, and as you all know, the council overturned the planning commission's decision and rezoned that 81 acres as industrial. Um, it was uh, previously, uh, uh, oh, which is W1, I'm sorry, right. which is an industrial zone. It's just a, down, a step down from the I-1. It was, but that never came up. Well, it, and I know that they were ready to propose that at planning commission meeting, but because there were so little comments being made, I don't think they thought it was necessary, so they didn't offer that and let it go to vote without offering it anymore. Because we didn't have a lot of comment, a lot of questions about it. So we need to change that portion of the land use plan and make it tie in with what the zoning is now. The area on the other side of Walden Street that's in, in uh, Bethel Heights has warehouses, commercial activity for the most part, all of that is. There's the crane place, there's the truck place on the corner, there's those warehouses in along Athens and the street in there, so those are commercial or a lot of industrial. I think we should leave them as commercial myself. I, I, I thought we had all of this as part of what we adopted already. No, because we didn't adopt in our land use plan anything that was outside the city limits in the city of Bethel Sorry. Heights. We, we filled in with the zoning, with what we were converting it to, but the land use plan does not. So why would the land use not match this? That's what I'm saying. We, we would match it except we have some agricultural areas and we don't put agricultural areas on the land use plan because A1 zones are holding zones until there's a higher best use. We don't have any areas on our land use plan that are designated for agricultural. So those areas, I've got to talk with my hands. I can't talk it now. Yeah. I don't know why I think it's good anymore. See this area right in here. Grim Road 71. Yeah, this area right in here. Okay. You know, uh, Apple Blossoms are, are uh, 60 lanes coming all the way down to here. So do we want to include all this to be commercial activity like it, like it's, these pieces are in there now? We have this along Salt that's agriculture, but I would think we would want this to to say some kind of residential development in here. Then we have all this area outside of this subdivision in here. Do we want to keep that as a residential area? Do we want to continue the commercial in some form up along 71, this, this now in, in Springdale, and, and maybe do a transition to a higher density before you get to this lower density stuff? And then the industrial here, this is the industrial commission's property that came out of Bethel Heights into the city, do we want to continue a swath of, of industrial along the railroad track up to here? Uh, those are the kinds of things that we, we haven't blended in well. The, uh, can, you, can you move this box? Yep. Um, we've got the intersection at, uh, here at the old 264 where there's some commercial along there. This is where the food bank and all that stuff is in there. There's some residential along here and then we have this area. This is where the, uh, and that's the commercial stuff is in here. There's a commercial lot here that's already been rezoned. Do we want that corner to be commercial as well? Those are the kinds of things that, that you know, we need to talk about. And we're really here to see if you guys have any other ideas different than what we've just kind of talked about in general. Kevin, if you have questions, you're welcome to chime in. Yes. I think we'll keep over. Okay. Um, I need to think on this one. Okay. Um, That's why we gave you a hard copy to take with you and look at it and see how you how you see it. Now we can get you a copy of the zoning map updated with the blended zoning of what we're transitioning okay. to Bethel Heights and that. We can, we can send that to you too so that you can have the two to look at. Yeah. yeah. Again, I'd like to, if we can, if possible, to set this up for a public hearing in December, which means we need to have this ready by before the next work session. And uh, why? Why are we pushing this through so fast? Well, basically we have a zoning ordinance that doesn't have a land use plan that backs it. 
and is this the year as far as to get land use? This is the year we were doing the land use plan anyway, and okay. since we had since a COVID upset, we did get through all of the discussions with everybody that we needed to uh, to really make major changes. But we've got to plug Bethel Heights yeah, into that. The reason why I'm asking for a little bit more time is because I want to see what the election results are sure. from the housing and sales tax permanent placement. Because that has huge implications. Oh, it does. And, you know, that's one of the things that we talked about in the 612 bypass is one of those projects. Right. It's on that next five and year. That 92 point. acres mm -hmm. getting zones mm -hmm. or 80, whatever on it. Um, I mean, that, that changes things a lot in that space. Um, and then I've just got to think through as far as black and well because. In order, we, we can set the public hearing for the December meeting and just take comments. We may not be ready to move it forward and get it updated. But I'd at least, at least like to have set the public hearing for it for the December meeting. Our work session would be the 17th, and I think that's after the deadline for submission. Because yeah, planning commission meeting is December 1st. And all the purples is commercial. So if, if we have a work session on the 17th and we can agree to that on the 17th, then those can go in the newspaper okay. that weekend and that gives us enough time. No, that's not true. We have to have the noticing on the newspaper on the 15th. I'm going to go ahead and do the notice for the public hearing and, and, if we, and it may just present the ideas we have on the final document then. Okay. We need to get the process started. Move the yeah. work session back. Uh, Uh, we could do that. We, we could change the date of the work session. Of course, we can't have it on the 10th because that's council meeting night. But we could have it like the 5th. The 5th would be uh, if we wanted to move it back to then. You just try to look at this and yeah. hope we get it. No, it, it I, think it's, I think it's that important. Well, and, and I would I would like to request that we go ahead and keep the work session on the 17th too because okay. we're going to talk about this optional form based code overlay and what you're going to hear in just a little bit is we want to to set up a work session on the 17th and bring in some of the stakeholders who are very interested in what we've been working on and they see how it can work in downtown <coughs> so you can have that I'd like to do that before the holiday. So once the holiday comes in, we start losing people. And now we're into February. We'd like to kind of try to move that forward. It's after the election, yeah. too. We yeah. kind of hold off till after the election to get some of these things out there. So if you want to have an extra work session to talk about the land use plan, that's fine. We can try to do it all on the 17th. It's well, just going to be really busy that night. I'm good with it. I mean, I'm able to be the only one that has. Well, let's just tentatively set it that way, okay? And then we'll bring it up at the meeting on the 3rd about having an extra work session yeah. on the 5th just to look at the land use plan updates for Bethel Heights. Did you put the Master Street plan in there too? Uh, that's what we The other issue is updating the Master Street plan, and quite honestly, it has a whole lot less changes because we already had... Oh, it's not in there? Essentially, we're just updating the location of 265. Right, mm -hmm. because we already had Apple Blossom on as a major collector. We had Lincoln Street already on as a collector street. We had we have to update the location of 265, and that's about it. We've got to take that extra, the old loop off, and it shouldn't be a good spot to it, too. Okay. When does Harbor, what, what's the plan as far as Harbor? Uh, it's supposed to go to bid sometime after the first of the year. I haven't done acquisition yet, and I've had some pushback from some of the property owners from the new alignment. I would imagine. And actually, quite a bit of pushback from the new alignment. So, I don't know. They don't have their air perm permit from the highway department either, because you got to have one of those to, to cross over that. But I think it is the plan for it to move forward and go to construction sometime next year. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, did Bethel Heights have a, a land use plan? Yes. Uh, yes. They have one. Was 
that any and it's pretty different. close to what I was just outlining. It's not much different than what we were talking about. Right here. Not much different than what the zoning is and that kind of stuff. We can send that to you too. Do we have a digital copy of it? Of their land use. Of their land use place because I don't have no I think we only ended up finding a paper copy of that. Was it not? Because I know that there was some stuff that like we still have access to the website to be able to pull, but I can't remember. Yeah. Some of it was there and some of it wasn't. We're beginning to was it in a book with a lock and key on it? accidentally hidden behind something else. We took everything that wasn't moving so that we could EDA did a lot, the Rear on did a lot of this whole thing. We have a good working relationship with them. That's so we, can, we can go back and get some of that stuff. Yeah, and I think they'll release it to us. Technically, right. they don't have to. They all should take over that for a minute. I suggested that too and got shot in the too. Too far away. Too far away. Too far away. You can't drive across the city. I, I try. I really, no, no, no. Thought, I really thought we should have picked up uh, the lodge and planning men's rep that lodge. That tells you a lot. Right. There's some people that need to visit the north side a lot more often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll send them a map. But actually, the transition to the zoning, as I said, went easier than I thought. There was not as many major differences as I thought there were going to be. And a lot of it, I was telling about some of it was not the way it was written, it was the way it was being used was the well, challenge more so than the way it was written. And I only dealt with the way it was and, written. And those citizens were really educated on it as well. I was pretty impressed with yeah. those that came to that session. So. Yeah. We had a good turnout. Yeah. I thought we had a really good turnout of, of property owners from Bethel Heights. And I had several of them tell me after the meeting and come in and, and send me notes and said, thanks for coming and sit down and talking to us. It's the first time we really had have had some really good conversations and that helped too. <coughs> well, and, and that's why I'm, I'm also bringing up as far as when is the Harbor Avenue deal supposed to go through and then um, I think there's other areas that, you know, for the Walton Foundation and what their future plans are for bikeability and walkability and things like that. I think they're going to be interested in, in forming those things because, um, you know, one area in particular is with the new nature center that's on the verge of opening and is, can we get a tour of that? I have tried, they have not opened anything up yet. Kevin said he would let me know just as soon as we could have a tour. Okay. Because they were scheduled to open in late October and they haven't opened yet. I don't know what the, what the new. I've seen the pictures in, it's more impressive. It's really amazing. Amazing. The yeah. pictures yeah. don't even do it justice. Yeah. But the accessibility <laughs> to that is just, of course, you know we have we have a project to to extend Spring Creek from where it ends at Thunder Chicken all the way over to 40th Street to be based, paid for with CIP money or out of the city's money, and then we have a two grants from the Walton Family Foundation and a CAP grant to do it across the the lot the uh, Game and Fish property. What's holding it up right now is an archaeological dig. They found some shards and the Indian nations have to come in and look at it before it can be released but they refused to come because of COVID so Brad said today they were some kind of a categorical exclusion but nobody knows just yet whether that covers the archaeological aspects of it or not and if we have an archaeologist on site can we go ahead and move forward to get that piece built so those, those pieces at least getting it from the Greenway to the game of fish on a bike or a walking is very well done. The 40th Street improvements will stop at the bridge. So you'll be able to come off of uh, Falcon and go north to it on, on a widened street. They're down to the last couple of properties to be acquired and I think that one's ready to go to bid as soon as the last few pieces have been acquired and start moving the utility. So we'd like to go to construction fairly soon too. And it's going to be a real mess for a lot of us. 40th Street's bond money, right? 40th Street's bond money, yeah. But it only goes to the bridge. Right. So you don't get as access of it off the wagon when it right. the bridge. And that probably needs to be in the next, if there's an next bond program, that's probably something that needs to be included with that. So extending the old pilot and all that? No, there's, 
No, there's no extension no. of time limit because that's the back side that opens up to it, and there is okay. a controlled access into it on that side for emergency purposes only. Okay. Yeah, right now. If you extend that parallel access road, you got to have another major bridge over the creek down okay. there, and the chances of getting that done anytime soon is probably zero to none on a good day. That's kind of where we are with that kind of stuff. So if y'all, we'll, we'll send you the blended zoning map and a copy of their land use plan if we can, we can get a digital copy to send to you guys on that. So we'll tentatively send it for the fifth to go over the stuff then, okay? Okay, okay moving on. Right. That takes care of all the Bethel Heights stuff. Yeah, so I think most of you guys were here last time when we talked about this, and it's got make the same idea for you, but uh, essentially what we are proposing is to provide the option to those that are outside the current boundaries of the downtown Form Base Code uh, to utilize the Form Base Code in areas that are currently under the traditional zoning. Here's a, a breakdown of these two areas. We've split it between the Powell Street overlay and the Mill Street, um, kind of following the corridor of the Greenway. And what you're looking at is the proposed designations uh, for building envelope types for these areas. And what we've done is to go through and look at these neighborhoods as they are existing in these properties and you know look at the current use and what is most appropriate and what's most comparable within the form base code designations and we put together these two. Um, Which so just kind of serves as a land use plan for that area. Right. Yeah. So the way we see this <coughs> happening is we would create a special district called form base code optional local district and we would come in and ask to rezone to that. And then this would guide the type of building envelopes that you'd be able to do inside that. Using all the standards we already have, so we're not creating anything new, but it gives the builder an option to be able to come in and use that form instead of traditional zoning. So administrative procedures, definitions, and all of those things just tie right back into the existing form. Um, applications, we have it broken down, you know, evaluating based on the typical setbacks within the area, back at flats for historic reference, things like that. Proximity to trails, schools, you know, and making sure that it's going to function cohesively within the neighborhood to create placemaking and that sort of thing. So, uh, we can jump forward. This is, this concept property here, um, we've put together some models that basically demonstrate the possibilities on these specific properties with building size. So this is actually within the existing form base code, but uh, funny enough, this one is under development right now. Mm -hmm. We're actually in discussion with the architect on this one. It will not uh, mirror this exactly, but nonetheless, uh, just goes to show that this is, uh, this property is being developed right now. This is not a, a pipe train. So, uh, it gives you a different option and a higher density of development as opposed to what you could do with a standard zone classification. Right. I think we, we kind of have a, a knee-jerk reaction to, from experience and maybe conditioning to duplexes and multifamily and you're most familiar with those three types between the, the typical garden apartment, duplex, a side-by-side -side duplex and a, a single family home. But I guess what we were trying to achieve through expanding this is being able to meet the need for missing middle housing by creating the possibility for all the building types to fall in between um, what we're able to do right now with ease. It's not to say those things didn't occur, but it would likely require multiple variances to achieve that as is in some of these areas based on the lot sizes. So this is a, it's on Ewald Avenue, Ewald and Dodson right here and this is could either be designed based on the way it was segmented inside as two duplexes with a 
shared garages or to single family units, but as is, this lot would not even be able to uh, be developed as a, a duplex, a single duplex. Uh, just shows you. Uh, this is on the same street. This is another subject property. Uh, it's a shotgun house layout. The one on the right actually has a has two units. And then we brought them all together to uh, kind of give you an idea with that's being built out, um, you know, how this would address the street and kind of create that feel. So. This is over on Powell and James. This is a neighborhood center type <coughs> two concept. It's a mixed use with some stack flats or row houses incorporated in. So you have a uh, a spread of different uses within one property. One of the things that we've talked a lot about is currently, right now, in order to have multiple uses on a piece of property, you, it can only be done as a put, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and uh, the, the minimum acreage for that is 10 acres. So in essence, the, the problem that's created is that a lot of times we're pushing those developments out to areas where they can find parcels at large instead of promoting you know, quality infill on smaller lots within the city. So that's one of the goals that we would like to promote. And that property is right adjacent to the airport hangars. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So exactly. you'd, be, you'd be putting that kind of development and that, that if you can go back to that slide. Yeah, sure. That property just to the north of that is the airport hangar. Mm -hmm. That's the existing trail. There's some more commercial development on this end. You get to the food track corner that's going in there. But that's it's a pretty good redevelopment of that corner. So I had some example here. Here is a, a, our typical idea of a duplex that I had said. This is not in Springdale for clarification, but something <laughs> I found online. And, you know, typical uh, garden apartment layout that we're familiar with, but I want to use this to kind of jump into the conversation. I talked a little bit about missing middle housing. Well, this, is a, this diagram kind of breaks this down. In older cities, you see a lot of these building types, everything in between single family homes and mid-rise, uh, and really the reason for that is a lot of those were developed prior to existing building codes and traditional zoning that we're familiar with. So by expanding these areas and giving people the option to utilize the form based code, we are in essence allowing uh, more variety of housing and we're also promoting affordability. So here's a breakdown. This is what this is showing you is on a standard lot, 125 foot in depth, 50 foot wide. This is the footprint here is about the same size as a standard single family home, but it's showing you that in the way it's designed and segmented, the kind of density you can achieve within an area while still matching the existing character of the neighborhood and not interrupting that and creating a feel and it, it's kind of fun. I mean, when you go back and look at some of these examples, existing examples in older cities, it's really hard to actually identify in these neighborhoods which uh, which of these units actually are a fourplex or a duplex, et cetera. So. And I have some examples here. We are more familiar with side-by-side -side duplexes. Um, as we just talked about, this is a stack duplex. You can see down at the bottom, I'll go ahead and break Net density is referring to the density not taking into account the public right of way. The gross density is taking common area and public right of way into account. So, uh, but alley loaded 8 to 25 units an acre, and as you can see, this could seamlessly integrate into an existing neighborhood. So, here's some examples elsewhere. See the single family homes to the left and the right on this one. Once again. So, this is the one we're more familiar with the side by side duplex. Um, once again, 50 foot wide lot, 100 feet deep, but still able to achieve 8 to 19 units an acre, which, you know, as you guys know from experience when we had discussions on multifamily developments. 
have you know 19 units an acre is actually what we would consider a pretty high density uh, by traditional zoning. Fourplex, uh, net density on this one, once again, 50 foot wide lot, 120 feet deep, the net density we're at 29 units an acre. Uh, but still, we're on a relatively small lot comparable to those around it. So. And that's with a detached garage in the back. And that's with a detached garage in the back. You're always able to optimize more on space if it's access via an alleyway and, and it, you know that's not always going to be an option in some places it's easier if you have a small block size and the developer is developing one entire side of the block then it's easy for them to go ahead and install that alleyway and make the access uh, from a side street but that's not always an option so you know it's different yeah <coughs> Two up and two down. That's right. Yeah, and you know, you can organize these in any way. Yeah. You know, a lot of different ways. Unfortunately for us, within our form that's code now, it doesn't really specify distinctly which way it has to be organized in terms of the way it's accessed from. Two could be accessed from the rear alleyway. Two from the front. Uh, one from a side street. One from a primary street. So there's a lot of different options, and it really allows. Developers to be creative in the way they like these things out. Well, we already have examples of developers that are thinking this way already. Yes. Okay, so yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, forget the gentleman's name, but I mean, he went the extra mile to meet with each of us on the properties, and it was, I think it was that one that you actually you needed to have a common driveway that could be used on both. Yeah. And, and that one. So, I mean, the, the thought process there, and he's, he's one that owns the whole block. Yeah, so learn. right. And we've had conversations with them. Yeah. We, we've had conversations with some of these people who are interested in doing yeah. this downtown. Well, yeah. And we want to bring them to the table and let them talk to you how it is <coughs> on the real world. I mean, we can write regulations all day long, right. but they got to work out in the real world and right. see if people are willing to take that. Right. And we've, we've had some really good input. Yeah. You know, we really have. Yeah. That's why November might be very good. <laughs> Next yeah. Right. Um, well, they'll feel much more expedited because we won't have a lot of uh, variances and things like that. Right. Um, yeah. It'll be busy for this stuff though, because I mean, depending on how we roll, it may it may require that we have an additional work session meeting just to yeah. nibble at this for an hour and see what people have to say. Well, it's a win. It's a win win for those that are existing property owners that. Um, this drives their property value up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of these. And they would be just looking for a change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it helps us address the type of housing we need to make sure we maintain in downtown Springfield. The dynamic. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> it's very important that we don't, and I always use the term, we don't price ourselves out of the market. We've got to have good quality housing down, downtown for everybody. Well, and the, you know, the reality is that in the existing, the parameters of the existing form-based code, I mean, it's it's getting to a point where there isn't many property to yep. develop. And if there is, the speculative pricing has taken it to a point where it's not realistic for developers to be profitable. And obviously, we have some great larger projects that are occurring, and we're super excited about those, but we'd like to start pinpointing and focusing on, on some of the smaller um, quality infill that can occur out on the fringes uh, to remain affordable and achieve the well, Let me ask you this, does this also open up the opportunity for uh, public housing uh, when you're able to demonstrate some of these yeah. capabilities that it can attract this force from a federal level? Because I know that we would love to be We just had some conversations in the last couple of weeks about the ability to take some of the public housing and 
do some of this kind of stuff so that we can provide a mixture of public housing with this kind of housing. And, you know, the city comes to the table with the property that's owned by the housing authority and bring in developers who can partner with it. There are great opportunities to do some of that kind of stuff, too. Now, most of that's already in the form of the code area. What we're trying to do is get to the next step right outside of that so we can do the same thing. That's where I was going with it is, is that it, it could be an opportunity as for a land swap. Yes, there's some of those opportunities too. And HUD used to have a, a program called HUD Chosen Choices that allowed you to work into that. They haven't put money into it in years. And we've been trying to watch to see if that's coming out of anything out of coming out of Washington. I haven't seen anything yet. That gives yeah. planning money to, to do the, the development cost and the, the planning and setting all that up. And, you know, we're just not there yet. Let's keep bringing that up because you go into certain cities, you don't really know which is public housing. Right. That's what we really and want. Not <coughs> yes, that's what we really want. And we have an opportunity in Springfield to do it right. You know, we didn't set the form based code too big when we started because we were careful about making sure we didn't create some unusable organizations and, and regulations that didn't work. And I think we're seeing it's working really well. And Austin said, all of that property is beginning to be snapped up. And people are beginning to look just outside of that. We want to be able to have the same kind of possibilities with that. And I, I, I say that only because that's what we're that's hearing what we yeah. right now. Really, a lot. Yeah. Uh -huh. We actually have people already that own property in these two areas, uh, as you mentioned, Kevin, that are yeah. ready to develop. And in fact, they're waiting on this to develop because otherwise they can't make these more difficult pieces of property. Yeah. Probably for them. So. No, it's not going to okay. He's not We're working. We're working on Larry. We're working on Larry to get into the program. He's not there. Actually, Larry's program. And Roy. This is Larry's right here. Hey, Roy, I know you have to leave here in five minutes. Uh, was there any questions or comments that you had? Uh, no, sure. Thank you, Lou. I, I, uh, I guess just a comment on, on the conversation we're on right now. I think it's wonderful we're trying to find ways to, to do this. I can tell you as being part of a, an investment, real estate investment group for Northwest Arkansas, they, they are desperately uh, trying to find what the next level up looks like because we, we all know how much land there isn't. We all know what that land goes for. And we all know where that land is. And everybody in town knows where that land is. So if we have the option to bring something different in Springdale before Rogers, Bentonville, or Fayetteville figure it out or at least make a move on it, I think it gives you light years to jump on, on trying to develop Springdale with different um, a different forward-looking attitude than, than some of the other cities do. So I think it's great. Thank you. We're, we're, we're holding it back, as you can see, the two small areas. We're not going on the other side of, of 71. I think there's some possibilities over there. But we didn't want to, again, dive off into too much until we kind of figure out how well this is going to work. Right. I think we'd like We've to argued back and forth about it. Yeah, we had a lot of time talking about that in a conversation yesterday. Uh, spoke about basically presenting the language in a way to where it can be adopted to bring in future overlays within that and not have to start. Yes, not, not so have to reinvent the wheel. That's why if we yeah. create a zoning class, a special district called optional form-based code, then if we have another area that we want to define like that, right. we can just plug it in there without having to do a whole ordinance amendment every time. Is there a risk as far as making it optional? You know, we've argued about that some too. I think ideally, this is a a way to get in the door and let that development occur. And the hope is that the momentum, once that starts occurring, we may get towards moving to a mandatory form of code. Um, we don't have staff level to go in and do the detailed type information that we would be comfortable going in and making it mandatory. We just don't have the staff to do that yet. So is there a way to let add language in there that it is optional until it gets to a certain percent? Well, we kind of thought about that. And I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what would be the percentage. Is it 50%? Is it 33%? Is it 75%? I don't, I don't know the answer to that. And yeah, what I, what, I, what I get concerned about with it being optional, is somebody's going <clears> to, <throat> they know that their property value is going to hold. And 
So they're going to go in with minimum standards. Well, it, it, and that's probably true. There's probably no way around that. I, I don't know. I don't have that. We've, we've, we've just especially with Bart Hester's wonderful mm -hmm. change in legislation. I know. I know. You know, and that's why we did it as optional. So it is the developer of that piece of property setting his own standards, and we are not setting a standard for housing. That's why we made it optional to start with. I don't know if we can expand the form based code into an area without 100% or whatever percentage it is in that ordinance to say those people agree to do that. That was the other concern because, like, like you can do it with PUD, but you control all the property. There has to be a, an agreement between all the property owners to put those kind of standards on there. And I don't know if we can get it in a very big area. Optional is those property owners are saying, we want to do this because we want these standards, we want to build this direction. That's kind of the reason why we went optional. I think that, I mean, the incentive for the developers, they can be more profitable mm -hmm. by increasing density. They make the compromise that they're increasing the quality of their development or getting a better product, but they are increasing density yeah. and you know measurable space. So that's the uh, we're hoping that that will be enough incentive to push them towards that. I agree with you. Yeah, but we still have developers in oh. the area that yeah, we uh, are going to just we do. put an eyesore out there. Yeah, and, and I don't know how how we deal with that. And maybe we need to make sure Ernest is, is involved. We, we've had these discussions, but not down to that detail of how do we how do we switch it over from being optional to become mandatory. And it's the Bart Hester thing that's the problem. Yeah. Because what the boundaries were when that was adopted can say. Extending the boundaries is something you can't do unless you have that support of all the property owners. That was the issue. So, I mean, we've, we've still got things to do. We're, we're, we've come a long way. I think we're going to have the, the support of the developing community to at least get this started. And to me, that's a big plus. If we have the stakeholders here supporting it, we can work out the rest of the details of how we make it much that's where stronger. I'm, I think that's what I'm in. I mean. I'm on board with it. Um, yeah. I, I just get concerned with the optional piece. Um, and it would be good to have stakeholders then let them have their input as far as the language of how yeah. it should be done. Yeah. And, and look, I mean, it, it's a harder road to, but, you know, that state legislation can also be changed too. True, you know, it can be. When there's better options that have been put in place. Um, had we all come to the table and actually sat down together like mature individuals. Um, we had we had this. Right. That's the way I thought we were going until boom. We, we were on that track and we were trying to do that and we got sidetracked in a hurry over, I don't, I don't know. But we, we've got a good thing going and I think it's going to work really well and it's just a good example. Mm -hmm. we just got to be able to extend it. How we do that is this is our first approach to see if we can get that done. And I think it's important that we have the stakeholders at the table with you guys saying we want this brought forward for Springdale because it's good for Springdale. It's not the staff bringing it forward. It's really the planning commission in conjunction with the stakeholders saying this is what we want to do. And I think that's a really strong message. Well, but we also do want the staff uh, because yeah, I know. I, I, yeah, no, I and I didn't mean it. We weren't involved. It's just if it's just the staff bringing it forward, mm -hmm. it's a different thing. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Okay. But you guys have put a lot of hard work into this. Well, they put a lot of hard work. But into and we want there to be an, an overall intent and not be. You know, entirely yeah. in designing this for the developers, yeah. so it's important that all yeah. parties, you know. My point is, is that you guys bring thought leadership yeah. that people need to start recognizing some of those out there. They really do a lot for the whole BCS. So. It's good for Springdale. I think it's really good for Springdale. Oh, I agree. I, I think it's more difficult for Springdale, um, but, you know, a lot of this is coming to play. Just because the money is there in Bentonville, and then that would be that. But I don't know if it's more difficult, or it's it is. we have a better opportunity to do it now than some of the other cities do because of what's going on. You're gonna have a similar look to Bentonville, 
but you have a very different dynamic yeah, that's true. You know, that's of demographics. True. Right. And that's what we need to entice. Unless you can afford a four to eight hundred thousand. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> so the plan is to set the meeting on the seventeenth to invite the stakeholders that we have identified as you guys got others that you want to make sure we get on the list. Daniel has something. He's looking at building. Oh, oh, he's he's got a lot of. Land. Oh, he's got a lot. Yeah, he's got a building. Okay. We can do the four base code area too. With the current project, but he's a supporter of going outside this area and extending it all further on down. Yeah. Right. So. He's probably looking at how can I do this for a pine Or Or Clearwater. Yeah. Or yeah. But. I mean, it, it, I mean, it's not things that we came up with on our own. We've done a lot of research. It's all over the country. Okay, and it's taking pieces that we know work from other places and put them together into something that can work in spring. We don't have to test it. We don't have to be the test model every time. Yeah. Okay, everybody good with that, this approach? I like it. Yeah. I think we have a chance to go. Good. Those we'll are two areas that yeah. greatly benefit. Those two areas, Paul yeah. and Milton, I think they really have like a, that a that huge, area. huge yeah. amount of potential, and we're just trying to uh, play on that, draw, draw mm -hmm. some of that out. And for downtown to be successful, we've got to have people living in the around MP. Right. That makes it work. Right. You know, that's the other element. You can build all you want to, trails, and, <coughs> and, but you got to have people, and you got to have people all the time. Okay. What else do you have? Rick's been working really hard on a cheat sheet. <laughs> so that if you need to know what the setbacks are for each of the different zoning classifications and all, it's got one piece of paper that you can look at. It's very colorful. But we're trying to help streamline some of that. Can you just send it on? Yeah. And then. Did y'all put in the, the new application forms for lot splits and all that? No, we don't have They're on our website. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you go to our website, uh, the first thing that you'll see at the very top of the page is, uh, what is October 2020 update, and it's just an outline that we're trying to streamline. We're trying to make things easier for us, as well as surveyors, engineers, and so on, as well as property owners. Are sometimes having a disconnect whenever the property owner and surveyor are not fully in the loop together on what it is that they are applying for, what it is that they are doing, and what the timeline and the process is. And so it's all very, I like to believe, well laid out there as to <laughs> this, this is what the, this is going to consist of, and these are the steps we're going to use because it's not just going to make our lives easier, it's going to make your lives easier. They're probably not going to get the sort of phone calls questioning as often anymore if they're making sure that their their clients, their applicants, are, are reading this stuff and making sure that they sign up on, on the same forms with them. Awesome. And again, they're, they're on our website and uh, on the, the forms and applications page. And, and we're looking at trying to do an update every month of something that's being changed. I assume you all have. I like our Instagram page. These guys have been out putting pictures up. Things that you said at the table and approve, and as they go through construction, you can actually see what they what they look like. And I think it's important to see that it's not just all paperwork. It's good things going on in Springfield. So. I have Facebook, but I don't. Yeah. I've eliminated the rest because it's what's the movie Social Dilemma. I've heard about it. I'll watch that and be like, <laughs> Well, I get a notice on my Facebook page when you get a post it. Yeah. yeah. So you'll get it there too. Well, that's how you reach me is through Instagram. Nice. So yeah. Nice. Yeah. No. Just trying to tell, you know, we've okay. all said for years and years and years, we don't tell Spring the story well. We're trying to tell the public what's going on and the good things that are going on and what's going on as development occurs and the good things that are going on. I'm glad you hired these guys to approve us. <laughs> That's okay. You know, I, I, 
I can't make decisions to bring the right people in patients. You know, exactly you know. Like you know. Um, you guys would also talk about fee structure for um, billing verification. Yes. Yeah. 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 We're, uh, we're not quite ready to fight that battle, battle at council yeah. yet. After we get into council C and we'll bring that up because it, it's always. I will say, as a component of that conversation, I would like to include for consideration some fee, either incorporated into the overall fee or separate item for the sign. Um, we seem to lose a lot of signs. I, I don't know why they cost around $35 a piece. Um, so I don't know what we need to do to address that because over time, $35 here and there, you know. And we're putting in a lot of signs because we're not a lot of signs. So you know, they just disappear, they get mauled in one way or another. Yeah. And so it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. And these are not uh, uh, plenty of signs. I mean, these percent. are, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. somewhere around there, when I drive up, there's not a sign. Yeah. Be yeah. Sometimes I think it's an intentionally taken out because they don't want the neighbors to know. Yeah. Or the thought that if you take the sign out, it won't occur or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing, you know. We'll solve this. Something that is a, a, a merely a deposit on the sign, or just right. something that will incentivize people to make darn sure that that's something that we get back after that first. The deposit might be the way to do it because the, the goal is not to you know nickel and dime people. It's exactly. just to ensure that we get the signs mm -hmm. back. We're not you know the, the city, the taxpayer is not eating the cost of these signs disappearing. Right? That so fee yeah. structure that you had talked about in general says yeah. that loud and clear. I, I think so. It, it, it doesn't say we're trying to make a lot of money. Please help us cover our costs. I mean, yeah. that's right. right. I think that was loud and clear when I heard yeah. it. Okay. You guys so listen to uh, your, your original point, we kind of cut you off when it came to the uh, fee structure of the, of the zoning verification stuff. Did you have anything? On no, I just, uh, I'm just glad you guys are still considering. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, we talked through it. You guys could, I was a little hesitant at first, but the more I think through it, it made it make sense. So. Mm -hmm. when, when the time is right. Not for not for no, it's probably a good thing. Until we see the new council, we're going to have some new body. We are in the process of interviewing for a planning technician to help give us another person to help make sure all the packets are together, all the information is there, we get complete packets when we complete applications, that kind of stuff, and to pick up that he's not going to work forever either. We got to do some getting ready for the future. So uh, we should have a decision that tomorrow. We're going to decide tomorrow. Yeah. We're going to take off for two Friday. We're going to decide before we leave. We're going to take off for two I need to buy her husband a gift for having dinner ready for her all the time. He's a bit. Let's get a cigar or yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's really all I need. That's exactly yeah. what I need. Powders, coke, wine, cigars. I wonder what he'd say if I'd showed up for dinner one night after that. I did. He'd say, come on, I'm going to go down. That's what I did. He'd be on the back porch. Didn't pay him a bit, did it? And she really means that. You want to come over and talk? That's really what she means. Thank you so much. Well, she'll also preface it with, you might not like what you hear. Yeah, <laughs> that's the choice you got to take. You got to take it really bad. Which is true. Yeah. <laughs> it is very true. It's not so much from Jay, it's from her. Yes, you can do it. Like that. <laughs> we will continue to go through the processes and try to streamline them and make them work better. Uh, that The change in the orders that we made that requires pre-application conferences, I think, is really making a big difference. Because... We're getting a lot of things discussed on the front end yeah. that we were missing before, and then we had to table it. it. It's hard to table somebody, but you know, you guys aren't in the design business. That's not what you're there to table for. Mm -hmm. They've got to get it done. And since we put out this new process on the lot splits, how many times have we turn people away this week? Uh, Two, three times. <laughs> 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 it's it's a it's a yeah. You just got to pay attention and do it. You're paying. A professional to do a job, and it's our opinion that professional should do their job. That's what you're paid for. And we're going to get into that point, kicking and screaming all the way. So that's where we are. Well, thank you guys. Thanks for yeah. attending. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate it. Good luck to you.
Thank you. Mm. Glad you're here, Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Thanks for coming. No, of course. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, I think I'm mean, clearly on. I'll, I'll try to come and make if there are make it one of these, but then yeah. get pulled one way or the other. Yeah. Yep. Here it is two weeks before. I think I'm probably good. Oh, more happy with this one. So. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we could have had that. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. And we we truly try to hold it now because you guys have plenty of things to do. Y'all have some of the actual projects. And I grew up, you know, on, on um, near the Mill Street uh, area, um, so I appreciate everything that's going on there. Yeah, I love that area. I do too. It it has the bones. It needs already. It just needs to be yeah, it's promoted and preserved. And that's all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you know, we were just talking about Gary bought several places. He's done good work, and then there's other buyers going in there, reworking some of the towns, and they're really yeah. nice. I mean, it, it's really yeah. taking off. Yeah, that's somebody else I talked to last night. If you haven't had a chance, great people in town. <laughs> no, no, yeah. if, if you haven't had a chance, or if you need to see the the loft at the Watson building, those yeah. are really nice. That's that's a new addition. That's getting ready to open up and uh, it's uh, a few more of those. I talked to Tom Lundstrom last week. They're getting close down here. On, well, they're not getting close. His term was never getting close. They got a lot of work to fill them in. They're really anxious. They are having people call already and ask about units and getting on a waiting list and they're, you know, they're not ready to open yet. So they started on the fuels and supplies building. You can see that it's been, uh, you know, taken apart. Uh, Peyton's gone um, a long way on his building across the street down there. And we're sitting in a new power pole today when I went up that way. So there's lots of things going on. Good things going on. We do have the, the keys to the Bank of America drive in building over there. Uh, ESA is using the store some of their equipment on the creek side. Uh, they have a proposal for how it can be used that's still being refined. You'll see that in the next probably six to eight weeks creating a place for the farmers market. Yeah, that's going to be the permanent yeah. one. Uh-huh. Uh, green, the uh, greenway market's really yeah. what we're talking yeah. about, uh, having it as a greenway market. So, so there'll be like that. wood clearing somewhat on <coughs> naturally? Not a, lot of, not a lot of wood clearing. It needs to be, the underbrush needs to be cleared out and kind of left like that. Um, the Luther George Park plans are supposed to be complete very soon. They're putting together, the DSA is putting together a steering committee to start a capital campaign to, to fund the Luther George Park. I think there's there's several things waiting to see where that's going to go. I think once we, once we know that's moving forward, there's going to be some more housing that goes along with that too. So, so it would be a Tyson Street benefit to write a big check for that. Mm, we don't think that. We do. Um, we were talking about we're getting a mural on the corner of what used to be Hewitt Street and Emma Street. It's being paid for by the Walton, part of the Oz Arts statewide, Arkansas, whatever. That group's coming in. Art Venture. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's your Art Venture. No, it's it's like Art Canvas only is something like that. But anyway, they have an artist that they selected to do that building, and it's being painted this week. So what if they're doing? Three in Bentonville, one in Rogers, one in Springdale, one in Pablo, one in Stuttgart, and then one more in the So those will be done in the next week or so, and then there'll be events, and they're bringing in a reporter from the Washington Post who's doing a big write up and all that's going on in the natural space. So that's going on. Working on a, another mural grant program to do some more murals around town. Yes, I was working on that. If you haven't been to uh, Oktoberfest, they've had some pretty good music on Thursday nights in town. Had some pretty good turnout. The uh, uh, food truck from uh, Brightwater has been here a couple of times. Thank you, I'm sorry. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah. And then I think the announcement was made today. There is a new chef coming in that will be opening up a new restaurant after the first of the year. Coming to, I think she's from Anthony? Oh. I can never remember. So there's, some of those things are going on. 
So as far as future meetings go, are you guys going to be here when we move, or? Uh, that's kind of up in the air. We're trying to stay in the council room until the building is going. And then the question is, do we go into the training room and on the second story of the courts build or the police building, or meet in the shallow meeting hall, or I don't know yet. I don't know if that decision has been made. As soon as we know anything, we'll post on yeah. social media sure. and we'll have it on our website just yeah. to make sure that Shall the meeting hall, uh, the white building? Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, the cool. two story, yeah. So we may have it there. Yeah, I'm good with that. Uh, yeah, uh, we uh, need to adopt a new calendar for some yeah. other meetings because we're to the bottom line on it. Yeah. Seems like I just did that last mm -hmm. week, but somehow we got to the bottom of the bottom line on that one. And then I got the email, I'm sure you guys did as well, as far as the Merry Christmas Springdale, that it's going to be two different times of that day. Yeah. I guess we just... It's on the 20th of December, Kevin, and one's at 5, yeah. and one's at 730, or something like that. They're splitting it up so they can make the distance. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. It's December 20th. Yeah. Okay. Is that a... Is that the metro? That's the Christmas party. Yeah, I know. What day of the week is that? Christmas it's Sunday. Party. That's what I thought. Oh, really? okay. It's a yeah. Sunday. That surprised me that it would come in Sunday. Yeah. So. Usually on a Thursday. Yeah, usually on Thursday. All right. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. 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 Thank you.